we've been very busy over the last uh, few months. Some new guys in, uh, some younger cohort, uh, i.e. Afghan, Iraq veterans. That's been really, really good. I think our, our count for the year has been for over 1,700 visits to the centre this year. Uh, and that's in 11 months. We've still got another month of the year to go for our perspective, which ends in January. Uh, from when we started this, a uh, lot of metrics. So it's about 1,700 people in through the centre in that time. Uh, the growth has been some of the projects we're running, some of the new projects we're running which weren't here the last time you visited. Uh, the walk and talks we do have been incredibly well, kind of well attended. Uh, I think they've been really well attended, the walk and talks. Uh, and what we find with the walk and talks is that uh, conversations take place, connections start to be made, families involved who then get to understand the progress of the veteran we're working with. Uh, and that's a really important factor uh, so that we don't have uh, a disparity of where they are. So in some many respects, uh, when the, the veteran first visits, the dynamic at home may be like that. Uh, and what we're trying to get is to get an even balance of what can happen if you only work with a veteran, this can start to happen. But what we're trying to do is get this to happen and so they grow together and then they become a stronger family. We create new positive memories uh, for those who have uh, served on operations or those who have found it hard to adjust to civilian life. It allows veterans to come in at any, any kind of level they're at and join a project which is right for them, not for us. They, they create the projects and it allows them to grow within that project working alongside their peers in a very, very relaxed manner uh, over a long period of time uh, with no pressure of end, you know, like uh, we feel that uh, therapy ends, what happens next? I've always thought about what happens next, because if we, if we do something with veterans and cut it short, they've got nowhere else to go, and it's important that the longevity that we create allows veterans to grow at their own pace, working alongside their peers. We're just a community of veterans that want to help each other, uh, and that's our main strength. We talk the same language as the people we work with, uh, so we create that environment that they want to, or, want, or they feel they can be part of, they feel they can contribute into, because we all get shared experiences. I think I was the angriest man alive, I wanted to fight the world. I wasn't in a good place at all. Don't know why I've still got a family, because uh, I, was, I was a scary person. I thought it was just being Glaswegian, but... Uh, I found out it wasn't, and uh, yeah, I went to see a psychologist, and I kind of know now that uh, I probably wasn't ready for that, because of what I do now, I understand that at that time I probably wasn't ready to see a psychologist. So I did one session with a psychologist, and I thought, this just isn't for me. So I'm back for the second uh, session, and I said to the psychologist, I don't know what you did last time, but I feel fantastic now. And she went, great, I'll write you off then. And then she signed me off. I wanted to get out of the room, but as soon as I got out of the room, I said to my missus, I says, what do I do now? So my journey then was try to find something that I could attach to. I was always looking for, uh, for me, talking about issues. I came from a family, a very loving family, but we didn't really show a lot of emotions. Uh, there was no, it wasn't a cuddly family, like, you know. So I don't think I had that in me. And uh, so I, I found it really, really ex hard to express how I felt, and uh, especially to my family. Like, you know, like uh, I, I didn't ever express how I felt. So I, I suppose the only manifestation of that was anger. So by having nothing, uh, when I left there, I thought, well, I'm going to sort it out myself. Uh, I'm pretty driven like that. And I searched everywhere, and I, and I found a, a program I didn't find anything in the UK that floated my boat at the time. But I found a program in Australia called uh, Wilderness and Adventure Therapy. And it was uh, by a doctor, Simon Crisp, I think it was. And I read the studies of it. And I got the part about getting into the bush and doing something that was really, really positive. I wasn't too keen on the therapy side that they did, so I wanted to cut that out of it. So I created the program 
around my learnings from there uh, and how I wanted to create it and, and that's kind of where we got to where we are. And I started to see myself change within that, but more than that, my family started to see that I wasn't a, I wasn't a, like a firebomb waiting to go off every time somebody looked at me. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's what I was. I wasn't in a good place. I came into Civvy Street, I suppose hating civvies, and didn't see myself as one. And I was doing certain jobs, and I, and I realised I could do the jobs better than the people I was there. I could do it quicker, I could do it faster. Uh, I, could, I could work longer hours, and they resented that. But I didn't know how to work any other way, because that's the way the army taught me to work. So the anger was building up. Uh, I wasn't a good employee, because I tended to tell the bosses how they should do their job, which never goes down well. And so I decided the only way forward was to start my own business. And we've got a couple of guys here we're helping now who worked for me. They're ex, ex soldiers. And they tell me now they just didn't come near me because I wanted to fight them all the time. I wanted to fight everybody. A, a guy came in one day, five minutes late for work. I chased him down the road, wanted to batter him in. And I realised that wasn't right. That wasn't right. But it went on for, I ran my business for 20 odd years. And how I never get jailed, I'll never know because I just, I was in fights literally all the time. Every weekend was a fight. Like, anger's a normal emotion, isn't it? We all get angry. What I'm not angry is, I don't take that home with me, ever, now. I, I, me and my wife don't argue at all. Like, uh, we have a bit of standing joke here, because, like, she's the one in charge and I think I'm in charge. But, uh, yeah, anger in context, which is a completely different thing altogether. Angry out of context, no, I'm never angry out of context now. But the reality is, I get so much out of what I do. This is my healing process. You know, like, uh, and I think that's what we're trying try to transfer on to somebody else. I, I, I say to some of the guys here, this is all about helping yourself by helping others. So if we can give somebody a hand, it should and it does make us feel good. Somebody asked me a question last week when we were in Portsmouth and they said, like, how many people have you helped? And the reality is we've probably helped over 1,600 veterans. We have lost a handful to suicide uh, over the years. So that's quite a, a tough thing to carry. And I used to overanalyze all of this stuff. Now uh, I accept. I'm, I'm of the, the thinking of if somebody's going to take their own life, they're just going to go and do it. There's nothing MD can do to stop that. Uh, they've made a conscious decision to do that. All you can do in the lead up to that, before they do that, is make things as good as they can for them. And we've had one in the last four or five months, I think it is, that took us our life, who I was working with two days before, and we were in the project room singing along to Pink Floyd songs, two days before he took his own life. And he, I would never, ever have suspected he would have taken his own life. And he did, because he just had made a plan and he just went and did it, you know, so, you know, it, it does affect you. And now his family are involved, you know, his family, we, we had a bench made for, his, for, for this veteran recently, and uh, his family we came and collected that the weekend, they came out doing the walk and talks with us. So, it, it's become bigger than that individu individual in the end, because the family is now involved in, uh, from grandchildren right up to uh, children and his ex-wife, like, no, they've all been here and all been involved and yeah, so it's, it's bigger than that one individual and having taken his own life, they, they probably wouldn't have been here before that, do you know, like, and uh, so it's, it's a bigger thing. Our aim is, is to grow as a charity, uh, for that to happen, we are, we're looking at corporates to, to get involved. Funding for charities now is incredibly difficult for the smaller end of the charities. We see big campaigns like yeah, your poppy appeal, they, they will never run out of money. Like, uh, but smaller charities, smaller organisations that are doing the face-to-face -face work with veterans, they have a battle ahead. Uh, funding is becoming increasingly harder. Fundraising is becoming increasingly harder because people don't carry money. You know, like, uh, that's, that's, we used to physically uh, fundraise all the time. So the future is to grow uh, an organisation that's more visible that people can see the tangible results that we have uh, and for companies to get behind us, like, you know, in a practical way, 
continue to build vehicles. We find that the longevity of building vehicles allows veterans to grow. It used to be always about the expedition for me, get people out in the expedition, give them a three or four week great expedition. But then what happens next, that comes back to that question I answered right away, what happens next? What happens next is the workshop. The workshop is the constant. The other stuff, the exterior stuff like the expeditions and trips are just, you know, good experiences. And good experiences are great, but then you have to be grounded after it. And it's the grounding part that we do is really, really important. We're not the, the take you to the heights and the summits of things, but what we are is the, when somebody goes to the summits, they come back and they get reality. We are the reality It allows the falls not to be too deep. That allows the, uh, allows the veteran to settle into normal lifestyle again, instead of becoming really, really low after a great high. I think, and, and I'm sure you'll ask some of the guys, I think what we have, the product we have, I, if you call it a product, I think it's good. The thinking behind it's good. What you need is some security of corporate funding or grants, whatever funding that may be, allows you to do more and allows you to help more people. We're not trying to be a big charity. We're quite comfortable, and again, I think you can ask the guys this, we work with small numbers over a long period of time and make positive changes. In order to support a veteran here, what we'd like you to do is head over to your website. There's a donate button on there. Just click the donate button, make a donation. If you can't do that, please just look below, press the thumbs up and hit the subscribe button.